Over the years, quite a few people have asked me how to make more than one pat with a 3D file. Well, in Fusion 360, I'm going to show you how to do that very operation to make these two brackets for a conversion on a 3018 CNC router. It's actually to hold a third rail to stiffen the x-axis up. So I've already have a pat drawn up in Fusion 360, which I'm just panning around here just to show you. Uh, it's just this bracket. And I do actually want to 3D print two of these simultaneously together. So I have to now construct another identical pat in the same plane. Now I'll show you what I mean by that as soon as I draw the the, the base material here, which uh, you do just by opening the sketch and choosing rectangle and just pulling the rectangle out to the correct size. So now I select extrude and pull it over so I can pull it out or extrude it in the correct direction or the correct plane so they match up. Then I, I give it a dimension, an absolute uh, dimension, which in this case is 20 millimeter and I'm just checking to make sure that it, indeed it is in the same plane. So now I have to cut sections away which is very easily done by selecting that A face, doesn't really matter, I could go from the front or the back, and then selecting a rectangle drawing tool, and then just draw the rectangle that I want to remove from the material, and I give it some constraints and absolute sizes. And now on the bottom here, what I'm doing is I'm actually selecting the bottom line I'm going to give it a, an absolute dimension, which means I want a certain measured thickness down the bottom there. And you'll, you'll watch it jump up in a minute. There you go. And that was eight, alternate to 8 millimeters. So then ex I can select extrude and then extrude it in reverse. In other words, remove the material and you just press enter when you've pulled it through as far as you need to go. And then select the face that you want to work from. Now this time I'm going to do a deliberate mistake. So I'm getting the rectangle uh, drawing tool again and same process. giving it some dimensions but this time I say okay I've finished and I'm going to remove this material and you notice it turning red that means it's a minus action but if you notice when I turn it back it's actually the wrong size this isn't a big deal I'll show you exactly what to do. Just reverse out of it. In other words, delete the last two operations. And uh, it just means you have to go back again. But, uh, you know, I'm just showing you that, uh, you know, if you make a mistake and you remove material, it's okay. You just reverse the process and uh, you can go back in and edit and make it right again. So then you select, you notice I selected the bottom line and now I'm giving it a constraint 
of the right dimension and now we can remove that material. It's a very methodical way of working to make a part up. Just a little pan around to make sure everything's right. Now I'm going to put a little fillet in here, um, especially when, you, when you're working with something like a, a bracket made of plastic. Um, it strengthens this area up a lot just by putting a small fillet in there. It's a 5 mil fillet and uh, it stops the area flexing or even breaking, you know. Not that it's under a great deal of stress, but certainly it's under some stress. Uh, there's another constraint to the build platform on my Flash Forge is 150 millimeters so that's why I've got these two parts spaced fairly close together uh, they're spaced 10 millimeters apart um, because then I know it fits on my build plate so to punch a hole through here you it's just simply you draw a hole now I'm giving that hole some constraints I've selected the outside line, the center of the circle. Now I'm going to give it an absolute measurement to ensure that that is absolutely in the middle. And you press enter and you see it jump across a little bit. Although I have snap turned on, that hole was being drawn right in the middle or between squares. Uh, the little tiny squares in, in, in the uh, background so it wasn't I couldn't actually get it to go into the middle of the material so that's where constraints come in constraints are just uh, measurements from one area to another area uh, so I have finished that one now and it's just press finish and select the area that you want to actually extrude. Press the extrude. I, it's not really necessary to roll it over, but I actually like to see uh, myself which direction it's going. And there it is. So select uh, the drawing again. I think I rotate them around no wrong so this time I'm going to make the slot in the middle it doesn't really matter I, I could have actually put the slot there first but it you know it's um, six of one and a half of the other it there's no particular order I could have done the hole first like I did do or you know I could have put the slot in first it really doesn't matter so I'm giving this now a constraint to put that slot right in the middle of that hole and then that's it so now again simple extrude or remove the material with uh, an extrude action. Select extrude and then remove it. It's very handy actually with it turning red you absolutely know <laughs> that you're going to remove the material. So that's basically um, uh, parts made in the same plane so it's just now a couple of holes to do so you just h highlight the, f the face that you want to work on rotate the material around and zoom into where you want to actually work you can see I've got snap turned on here too and I'm, I did actually manage to get that right in the middle of the material 
I think sometimes that uh, Fusion 360 sometimes understands, you know, what you want it to do. So it, there must be some sort of learning program within uh, Fusion 360 that looks at the way that you do things. Or, or should I say it seems that way. <laughs> And it's just the same process, just pull pull it through or extrude it through in a minus direction. So you can see too that the parts are all on the same plane. So now it's just the two holes in the bottom. It's a very, very simple process of actually making a, a part. I mean, this part, I suppose it is a simple part, but there's quite a lot of uh, geometry in it. So now I'm just panning. You notice I, I just choose pan and then just pan the material over so I can work on the other side of it. I don't think there's any particular order or way in which you need to draw this really. Um, as long as you're, you know, you're comf comfortable doing it in a particular way that you you sort of generally draw, or you know, you do do things. Um, Fusion 360 is pretty forgiving actually it uh, sort of plays along with you if I can say that so there we have our parts made so the next job then to do is to save this as an STL file uh, which you can use then in a 3d printer or 3d printer software So I just have a last pan round and then go to file and export and then export this geometry as an STL file. I actually missed it the first time so I had to go back in and get it a second time. There you go, STL file and I put it to a location on my desktop where I can then upload it to the Flash Forge which is my 3D printer so I hope that's been a help to you it's a very simple uh, geometry program and uh, this is how it turned out all on the one build platform and uh, everything was perfect. So thank you for joining me for this tutorial. And I hope you pop in again and see another one of my tutorials. As well as please subscribe, press like. And I'll see you again. Bye for now.